Welcome to 15 Minute Fundamentals, where we break down crypto projects and learn about the drivers behind the data you see on our charts. Today, I'm joined by Michael Svoboda, COO at Liquity, an interest-free lending protocol for stablecoins. Michael, welcome to 15 Minute Fundamentals. Great to have you on. Thanks, Oscar, for having me. Of course. Now, to kick things off, it would be great if you can give us a quick intro to Liquity. Yeah, so Liquity, allows you to borrow money with zero interest against your Ether collateral. So it's a borrowing protocol. And there are two typical use cases what people do. First, people like to buy things, but they don't want to sell Ether. So they provide their Ether as collateral and can get a loan in LUSD, our stable coin. And what are people doing? So for example, Ashley from Uniswap, uh, she bought a car like that, Eric for his financed his house or a student might finance uh, his studies like this. And the other important use case uh, or user group are traders that want to leverage their position to either yield farm or get a higher exposure to EVE. I think these are the things how liquid is used. Maybe quickly, um, how does it differentiate, for example, to Maker? So Maker is quite similar. I think we have a very attractive loan conditions, so just a one-off fee. 0.5%, we're more capi capital efficient. So you can, um, you only need 110% of collateral in EVE. So it allows you to leverage up to 11 times, even though I wouldn't do it. And it's fully immutable. So kind of um, terms and conditions can't change. Okay, awesome, great overview. And moving on to fundamentals, I'd like to start off with revenue. Um, could you walk me through Liquidity's business model and how you're generating cash flow? Sure. I mean, just to put that into perspective, so Liquidity launched last year in April. So we generated approximately 27 million in revenues. And it's in the top 20 of DAP protocol on token terminal, you know, for the last 360 days. And how did we generate those revenues? Main driver is the issuance fee. So every time a user borrows uh, against his Ether, he pays usually a 0.5% one-off fee. Um, so that's the main source. There's an additional source that's the redemption fee. So that's um, if somebody doesn't need to be the borrower, has LUSD and wants to redeem this LUSD one-to-one -one, um, into Ether. So it's like more a pack mechanism. And if you do that, you also pay a fee. So a borrower pays an issuance fee when taking out a loan do they also pay a fee when paying back that loan? No, actually they're, they're repaying. So we call that repaying. You don't pay a fee. So for the borrower, it's only the issuance fee, no other costs. And the LUSD is more, if somebody buys LUSD, holds LUSD, and um, pack is a bit below, you have always the possibility to redeem it. So that's the, the, the second fee that anybody um, can use. Got it, yeah. So the redemption fee is part of the peg mechanism uh, and it's completely separate to paying back the debt itself. Sure. And last question on revenue. What do you see as the pros and cons of a one-off fee model compared to other mechanisms? I think one-off fees are great and innovative. You know, uh, imagine you, uh, you bank, <laughs> telling your bank you want a one-off fee on, on your interest. So something that's unheard. And uh, of course, the cool thing is that you have fixed cost. You can lock in your rate. Uh, and, and very attractive rate. So um, if you compare it, so, so the rate is really attractive. If you compare it right now to other borrowing and lending protocol where you have three to 4% variable interest. So you, uh, uh, it's ongoing and it, it can happen that it spikes to 10%. You have no idea. So now you have the loan and, and, and uh, I think that's the great advantage. So that's the pro, this uh, fixed cost. The cons um, is of course, if you um, have your loan only for a very short period of time, then it could be uh, more attractive to go f for variable rate loans. So if you just want to have the loan for one month, then um, these kind of solutions are, are cheaper. Got it. Now, you mentioned that you've generated a total of around $27 million in revenue since launch. It's currently a bit over $28 million. And if we look at your total value locked, it's sitting at about $1.6 billion. And it's been pretty stable for the past three months, as has your borrowing volume, uh, which is pretty much in line with the general market lending protocols. We've seen a slight decline and pretty stable metrics in the past three months in borrowing volume, TVL, 
and uh, revenue slight declines there. I wanted to ask that, how do you guys internally rate your performance since launch last year? As I said, we launched one year ago, and I think just kind of what the team and protocol achieved, it's really impressive. So uh, we issued more than 4 billion in loans. Um, I think we are in the top 20 of protocol revenues, as I mentioned last year. Top 20 of total locked value last year. So I think um, these are really great, uh, great metrics uh, for, for a young protocol. So, so I think definitely check kind of uh, the checkbox and most of it actually with organic growth. So that's also now going forward. As you said, kind of borrowing volume stays a bit the same. That will be the focus for the next 12 years. Um, not just relying on the, on the organic growth, but to be really more active. And uh, maybe I can talk a bit more later about that. Also what we do in on the B2B side, so with institutional players. Sure. I mean, go ahead. It would be great to hear about the developments on the B2B side if you want to share those. Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, what's really exciting, so hopefully we can announce it soon, but um, we are collaborating with CDFI players. So players that, um, that are regulated, that hold customers' funds, uh, which really like liquidity and directly interact with liquidity to provide their clients uh, fiat loans directly sourced out of uh, DeFi. And, and I think that's really exciting and we want to help these clients to use this DeFi product. So that's something we started talking to those institutions and there we see an interesting potential for growth and, and, and also low hanging fruit and opportunity for liquidity because we are so de decentralized and uh, we have no real counterparties that makes it from a regulatory point of view very interesting for this place. Yeah, that, that's really interesting. Sounds like a massive market opportunity. And the next question was going to be on what you see as the main drivers right now for LUSD adoption. Is it is it institutional demand increasing or what are all the factors you see there? It will be more, more long term that takes more time. To build up um, so first of course it, it was it was retail also the opportunity to um, earn interesting interest rates on LUSD in our stability pool then uh, we are working with Dow treasuries so there we saw a cool um, uptake with Fay and Olympus Dow um, putting LUSD on their balance sheet or in, in their treasury and uh, we hope, for example, that it also will be more and more used in, in, in DAO circles for payments of contributors, for example. That's why we're also working with exchanges. So we recently got listed on Gemini for LUSD. So you have a fiat off-ramp. And, uh, and there I think also see a lot of potential. I think we are one of the most censorship-resistant stablecoins with LUSD that we have. So I think that's really interesting for DAOs and contributors to ha don't have any dependency into the real world like with other stable coins and speaking about growth and adoption i know you have incentive mechanisms in place for both early adopters and uh, front-end operators who provide web interfaces for end users could you speak a bit about the role of token incentives within the liquidity ecosystem yeah so as you said th these are the two functions so for st stability depositors um, which help us to liquidate loans. So that's also a difference to Maker where they're auctioned off. We have kind of funds uh, ready in the protocol um, to liquidate loans. That's why we can have a, such a low um, collateralization ratio of 110% and the cap capital um, efficiency. So um, they get rewards in LQTY and also the, the front end. So these are the two uh, incentive mechanisms that are built in. Got it. Now, you guys really emphasize decentralization and immutability as kind of the core values of liquidity, and there isn't really any human-driven decision-making within the protocol. Do you have any sort of governance system in place? No, there's no reason to have one. <laughs> if you're fully decentralized, um, nothing is changeable, everything is immutable. Um, no, there is no governance. And do you see this as one of your core value propositions or differentiators? Yeah, it's, it's a differentiator, clearly, uh, also then from the regulatory point of view for, for the user. Um, it has, but it has its own pros and cons. Um, so, so, so it's a trade-off, but, but I think it's a really uh, interesting one. to. Uh, I think what Robert, the founder, really wanted to achieve is kind of how, 
how can you deploy a protocol in, in the real sense of decentralization and, and DeFi? And, and I think there it's, it's an important part. Yeah. And as everything's immutable, what is your current collateral composition? And are you looking at any ways to add new types of collateral in the future? Sure. So, I mean, right now we only take Ether as a collateral also to be kind of define native so not kind of any real world assets or assets that can be frozen um, and because we're immutable i mean for liquidity that version that's it so uh, it's um, kind of set in stone of course uh, we think there are uh, interesting other collateral other collaterals especially interest bearing collaterals so really looking into that analyzing that um, but this would need to be then something that we do in a in another version. So it's we we need to think more like Uniswap. You know, you have a Uniswap version two. It's great. It's out there. If you want to improve something, you create a new version of liquidity. And um, yeah, so I think uh, uh, we are following w what others are doing and what what, what would make sense, or especially what users are are demanding. And, and I think, for example, stuff like staked ETH uh, is, is is really a need we see out there. How about other chains? Are you looking to expand outside of Ethereum? Um, I mean, it's a bit difficult with, with stable coins because you issue a coin, it needs to be fungible. Um, you don't want to spread the risk on too much changes and bridges. So, so that's really a risk. So we are very careful there to keep the, the system solid. So the main route we're looking into is collaborating with uh, layer twos or, or bridges to bring LUSD to other chains chains and not kind of the main borrowing system and for example there are interesting approaches we are exploring uh, with with AdStack how they can borrow on mainnet but still cheaply on, on an L2 and uh, access that so I think this is really exciting where where we put most focus and energy into. Sure moving on how do you view the competitive landscape right now we've touched on Maker uh, but are there any other players that you're benchmarking against? Yeah, I, I think Makers is probably really closest to what we do. Um, but And they have been longest in the space and, and are clearly a dominant player in that kind of area where, where we also are and also from a stablecoin perspective. But there are differences. You know, they have different collaterals. They are not immutable. So I think everybody has its, its user group. And... Um, I think our biggest differentiator there is really the, the, the one of fee and zero interest rate, especially if interest rates start again to, to increase. Um, I think that that's an interesting proposition we have or, or a differentiate. Yeah, although not directly comparable to liquidity, as we're speaking about over collateralized stable coins here, I, I want to ask what you think about algorithmic stable coins. Yeah, it's a very interesting area, but I think it's also a difficult uh, one to get it right. I mean, we have seen that in the, in the past with pure algorithmic ones. I think what's really interesting is this combination. And, and, and I'm sure we'll see a lot of innovation or most innovation in these partially collateralized stable coins. Um, yeah, so something I think is interesting, but, but it's really difficult to say. You only know it once kind of a bank run or something like that happened. But I think still, uh, we, we'll find great new ways for, for these kind of uh, stable coins, I'm sure. Final question on my end would be, what's next for liquidity? Yeah, we've been uh, exploring a lot of ideas to improve borrowing and lending with the team. So always innovating and looking for new solutions. Um, and But what we will do this year, what, what I already can say is that we some first, before we release a new product, want to introduce something that uh, helps our ecosystem and um, I'll be happy to, to share more than, than in the summer, but uh, um, still kind of the team is hands down and, and, and working on, on the improvements for the existing liquidity system. Okay, awesome. And um, if anyone watching now wants to kind of learn more about liquidity or follow you, what's the best place to do that? Um, follow us on Twitter. Uh, we have a Discord uh, group and we have a very active blog. So Derek uh, is, is, is amazing putting out a lot of content, uh, also our doc session, uh, our docs I think are really outstanding, really a lot of material, videos, uh, write-ups. Um, yeah, I, I think that was a great thing to see, you know, onboarding such an institutional player. 
So actually we could point them just to all the information, we helped them, but they did it on their own, you know, at, at the end. And they had re really few questions. So I think that was really great to see. And uh, yeah, I think that's open to, to everybody, if retail or institutional. Hey, thanks a lot, Michael. That was all the questions I had. Sure, it was a real pleasure. Thanks, Oscar.